of springtime ring To have a friend right in your corner Your heart will feel a little warmer Tender, loving Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, I'm happy to talk about this interface between Christianity and medicine. And the interface is always about tenderness and always about loving and caring. And uh, today I'm going to be telling a story that my sister told this past weekend uh, in the latter part of April 2015 at the dedication of the David Weiss Memorial stained glass window at the Child Development Center on the campus of West Virginia Wesleyan College. And uh, it was a wonderful story and, and uh, she sent it around and, and I, I marveled at it when she told it and I think it's worth telling again uh, to, to our audience here. Uh, as you know, and, and many of you may have grown up not only with myself but with my sister Kay, uh, Kay and I were, uh, as the saying is, Irish twins. We were just about a year apart. And in fact, she has a birthday, May the 1st, uh, coming up. And she and I will be one year old, uh, one year apart exactly at that time, whenever she she's, uh, has her birthday. So <clears throat> Kay grew up to become a preacher. And uh, among her other life experiences, she, she sought out spiritual advisors and and had an interest, a deep abiding interest in faith. And she went to India to visit Mother Teresa. So part of the story is about that too. Uh, but also it turns out, I think it's a story of her own philosophy of life, uh, making something beautiful of your life. And uh, it's a good philosophy. Our mother, Lois Flanagan Almond, uh, had taught us over and over again uh, by repetition and by her life to say, uh, to leave the world a better place than you found it. And that's another way to talk about making something beautiful of our life. Uh, well, let me, let me share a little bit then about this. And if you're interested, I don't have the picture of the stained glass window today, but uh, the, the uh, Child Development Center has a wonderful stained glass window now. And uh, just to describe it briefly, it's, uh, there is a giant weeping willow that, that has playground equipment under it, a tree house and and uh, activity centers around it. And that, that's an ancient, it, perhaps 200 year old tree. It's very, very impressive. Now, unfortunately lately, they've cut off the top of it. Uh, maybe it was going to uh, land on a building or something. So they've trimmed it down some, but it's alive and it's growing. And I hope that it lives for many more years. And that's the heart of the window because uh, when, when David and, and our children, Ronce and Maria were a part of the uh, Child Development Center at Westlane. <coughs> they played under that same tree. And they recalled it fondly. And uh, so the creation of, of a memorial includes as a central that, uh, that weeping willow. And there's a poem uh, written by a bus driver, which I'll try to get hold of someday and, and uh, share that with you too. Uh, this man apparently was just driving some students to Westlane at a sports event he saw that magnificent weeping willow. He wondered about it and, and created a poem and then slipped it in uh, to the roots of the tree and someone found it and it didn't get washed away and it's preserved too. So uh, what I'd like to share with you then, uh, Kay's uh, thoughts on do something beautiful for God. Do something beautiful for God. She recalls her time going to uh, Kalika, Calcutta, India. <clears throat> I, when I was in medical school, Kay was traveling the world. She would go to Brazil, she would go to India, uh, she, would, she, would go, she went to Israel, lived on a kibbutz. Uh, she sought out life adventures like that, making her a very interesting person. Well, this was her time to go to see Mother Teresa. She said she walked through the door of the old temple inn, and there was a sign in English and in Hindi and Bengali. 
in, there in, out in Calcutta. Of course, India, as you know, is a free nation. It's the largest democracy in the world. And um, it um, has more Muslims than even any other nation on earth, of, as far as the Muslim population. But of course, Hindu would be the main religion. And then the nuns were, were Christian, of the Roman Catholic uh, uh, persuasion. So uh, at the door, they have the English, Hindi, and Bengali language. And the title, the, 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 the caption is just, Home for Dying Destitutes. As Kay marvels at that name, uh, that's a uh, dying destitutes. Uh, I mean, what can that be? Uh, but yet there are people who die on the streets of Calcutta every day, and they die alone, and they die hungry, and they die, you know, with flies on them and so forth. So the Sisters of Mercy, uh, Mother Teresa and, and her nuns, <clears throat> gather these people up and they bring them to this inn, and they keep them clean, and they have a mat on the floor, and they feed them, and they, 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 uh, they soothe them any way they can. Uh, you can imagine uh, just caring, tender, loving care. Uh, inside, uh, there were mats lined up on the floor with folks of all sorts of distress. Only one old IV pole was hooked up to an ancient old man. So there, no other medical equipment. This is not a medical facility. This is just a home where they can spend their last days or last time on earth. Uh, there were no nurses, no doctors. <coughs> There's a sign, uh, a white sign on a post that catches Kay's attention as she comes in. It's entitled, it says, Do Something Beautiful for God. And these words settled into her and has held on to her all these years. This We're talking about 40 years ago now. Uh, so this is a powerful, do something beautiful for God. I believe this has become Kay's philosophy of life. Uh, people are gathered up from the streets of Calcutta. They're brought to this place. It's quiet. It's clean. Uh, there's food. There's a tender touch uh, from the nuns who look at these ragged folks and they see God. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, even in the least of these, we can see God. Uh, we're, we're called upon in the scriptures to visit those who are prisoners, uh, to... to uh, visit the sick, uh, to uh, clothe the naked, you know, and do this uh, in the name of Christ. But, but also, Jesus said, uh, as you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto me. He made a very strong uh, statement, and, and the nuns obviously have picked that up, and they see God in these destitute people. <clears throat> uh, David's mother, uh, Jeannie Wiest, a uh, local doctor, uh, now retired, and her husband, and Joe Wiest, is still a professor at Westland, uh, had talked about this day when they would dedicate a stained glass window at the Child Development Center on the campus of West Virginia Westland. And Jeannie, uh, characterizing herself, said, I, I'm not a maker of beauty, but I'm an appreciator of beauty. And Kay thought, well, an appreciator of beauty, that's cool. And you can, I can hear my sister saying this. And by the way, my sister's a very fine pastor. She's retired herself. And she was one of the first women, I can brag on her a little bit, uh, women pastors in, in the West Virginia Westland Conf Conference uh, of the United Methodist Church to actually uh, get uh, break the glass ceiling, so to speak, to get a church in Morgantown where there was actual staff uh, to supervise. Many, many churches, as you know, throughout the conference are Tiny, they don't have secretaries, they don't have staff. The preacher is there alone. He does everything, she does everything. And, and that's okay. These are house of worships and, and they, mean, they mean a lot to us to have them all over the county and all over the state. Uh, but, but Kay was able, uh, through her skills and as a pastor, uh, to, to gain a position with a church uh, that had a staff. So she broke the glass ceiling uh, for women uh, in that regard. Uh, and that's cool, too. Uh, loving and laughing and crying your way through um, is a, is a uh, book that uh, Kay read uh, by uh, Zora Neale Hurtson. Uh, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Uh, she must have really enjoyed that book. Their Eyes Were Watching God. I haven't read it, uh, but Kay reads widely, and, uh, and if she recommends it, I would recommend it, too. Their Eyes Were Watching God. Zora Neale Hertzen, and uh, she makes comments about, about what she's read here. 
uh, she, she says that, and how she, what she's experienced about making beauty and being part of beauty. Uh, she recalls going up to a, a pastor friend's home in Pittsburgh and uh, listening to Rachmaninoff, uh, which is a, a beautiful uh, but very powerful music. Um, and then she recalls uh, Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in uh, Boston, uh, a wonderful museum, and says, uh, so Jeannie and her have traveled uh, to different places, done these things, and she said, hmm, uh, I'm not a maker of beauty, but uh, Kay disagrees. She said, uh, uh, think of the beautiful things Jeannie has made. Um, Jeannie's known in our community for making bread, for example, um, and, and uh, their place of beauty up on the hill, Water Tank Hill, is indeed uh, a beautiful spot here in our town. And then, and then of course, they, they go back to this play group, uh, the children who, who went to the Child Development Center when David was a little boy, and, uh, and, the, and the, the fact of making two beautiful sons, Don and David, uh, these are all creations. And of course, then there's the grandchildren, and I can brag all day about my grandchildren, but Jeannie has, and Joe have Claire and Margot and Jane. So these are cousins, these are, these are beautiful children. <clears throat> so keeping Kay's theme going, doing something beautiful for God, she says, uh, Jeannie knows how to do that. And um, Kay recalls her own wedding uh, and, and 29 years ago to Tom Keeley, also a pastor. Uh, and uh, they recall that what they used as part of their litany in celebrating their marriage uh, French poet Pierre Griolet, um, he, he said this, he says, Oh God, you wanted not, gra not wheat and grapes, <coughs> but bread and wine, so that our work might share in the creativity and tenderness of your love. So the wheat would be the natural product, but the bread is something created by, by man, and in this case, uh, genie's bread. And the grapes, of course, uh, can be turned into wine, uh, and, and that would make it even more creative and more tender. And so we bake, we tend our gardens, uh, we put words down. Uh, I'm a writer of books myself. Um, we play music, we put paint on campus, on canvas, we study the stars, we create and keep friendships, we put the pieces of colored glass together to let the sun shine through. <clears throat> we do something beautiful for God, all of us. And it is thought today for tender, loving care purposes, uh, this is a, we're having our strawberry festival, the 74th year. Our community has done something beautiful for God with the strawberry. And uh, we need to celebrate that. It's the largest volunteer uh, festival in the state of West Virginia, run by volunteers. And we can be proud of that. Well, she wants to, Kay wants to share something else here with us, with the group gathered at this dedication of the stained glass window. She said uh, a nearly perfect day that she experienced uh, with David and uh, uh, with, with my children, Maria and Ronce, and then uh, my, my nephew, Taylor, in Boston. This is uh, over 30, 40 years ago now. Um, she was, uh, Taylor was 15, and... Uh, he wanted to see about Exeter, where David was going to school, and so they, uh, they boarded a train here in West Virginia and traveled by train up to Boston, and there they were going to rent a, a car and, and go over to uh, Exeter in New Hampshire. And uh, our son and daughter, Ron and Maria, were studying at Harvard that summer, and uh, we, were, we were very blessed with, with bright children and ambitious children, and, and they just wanted to go to school all the time. <laughs> Uh, I, I kept asking if they want to take the summer off, and they will always find some, some experience, academic experience. And this particular summer they were at Harvard. So they, they met David, and, uh, who's at Brown University in Rhode Island, and came up to Boston. And, and Kay and Taylor met there in Boston, and they all got together. And they forgot that it was Memorial Day at uh, this particular time they were visiting. All the rental cars were gone. So they, they recall uh, searching around, trying to find a rental car, and they finally got a rent -a wreck <laughs> a place called rent -a wreck and uh, there was one car left, and uh, 
it was a wreck, all right. And uh, the, the owner of the shop said, well, it might get to Exeter, it might not. But they, just, they, had, to, they had to rent it, and, and they did. She said by then it was late at night, they were throwing Frisbees back and forth with each other, and she recalls them going down Newberry Street late at night, throwing their Frisbees back and forth across the street. And Boston, uh, of course, is a wonderful town and wonderful parks, and, and uh, so they, they enjoyed themselves. Uh, late night, ice cream. Uh, she's describing a near-perfect day, a bookstore they found that was open. Uh, they enjoyed each other's company, and then, and then by the next morning, they're ready to go uh, to, um, to Exeter. <clears throat> Sunday they, they, uh, they signed on for their rent a uh, She used to drive as the over 25 person, but she lets Ron drive and, and, uh, and David. And they drive uh, up to New Hampshire to Exeter. Uh, happens to be, of course, Memorial Day weekend. No one's there. The campus is deserted, but David who's gone there as a private student. Uh, wonderful place. We visited, I visited on another occasion and uh, loved it. Uh, wonderful campus like West Virginia Westland. Uh, some of the facilities even grand. Uh, the Olympics uh, swimming team actually practices at Exeter. So they have excellent swimming pools, more than one pool. And, uh, and Exeter, of course, uh, new, in a New England town, very quaint. Uh, so uh, they visit, they see all the things that there are to see. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the meadows were lush and green. Uh, they, um, they, they actually uh, went swimming in the river there. Uh, uh, David jumped off the, dived off the bridge first, and then Taylor, and then Ronce, and Maria and my wife, my, wife, my sister, uh, watched from the side, um, enjoying that day, a near-perfect day. And now uh, Kay, very academic, uh, switches gears again, uh, describing that day, uh, describing previous poems. Now she goes to poet Andre Lourdes, uh, who wrote a poem, Poetry is not a luxury, and beauty is not a luxury. Kay makes this point. Um, it's not extra. Uh, we, the stained glass window that's been dedicated on the campus of Westlane will be some a, a, an object of beauty. Uh, all the students, a hundred years from now, who go to this creative or this child development center, will see that stained glass window. And will will hopefully see the the uh, weeping willow outside. Will be, still be alive. It's been alive for two hundred years, perhaps. But um, a thing of beauty. It'll last. It's not a luxury. Uh, our souls hunger for beauty. Kay, who has studied the soul as a pastor all these years, and I've studied the body as a doctor, uh, and, but I respect the soul. Of course, the mind, I've studied the mind, but body, mind, and spirit, we're all three. But it's not a luxury that we need the beauty for our soul uh, to be uh, both the audience and the maker, uh, to do something beautiful for God, Kay says. She summarizes her thoughts here with um, a prayer, um, a blessing, a blessing for the stained glass window. And I want to share that with you too, and then we'll reflect some more about, about uh, how we can have beauty in our life. Uh, the prayer goes, God of creation and all grace, we dedicate this work of art, this creation of beauty, May the children who see it day by day by day be formed by this beauty. Uh, thank you, God, for loving us so much. Thank you for loving David then and now all the way. To you, God, be the glory. Amen. Okay. A thing of beauty. Uh, to, uh, to make something beautiful for God. <clears throat> we, um, we live in a... Um, world that's chaotic, uh, we, we, so much of the time, I don't try not even to turn on the TV set and get involved in, in riots and, and war and uh, earthquakes, but that's all that's happened this week. Many, many things happen every week, uh, the destruction and chaos. But uh, think about it, as a counterbalance, we need for our own sanity, for our own soul, for our own peace, uh, we need beauty. 
Um, now, if you are uh, listening to this, you're a citizen of Buchanan, you're, you're, you're part of our community. You may be out in the community outside the town. You may be uh, uh, 10 or 20, 30 miles from Buchanan uh, on the cable system, but, uh, or you may be on a YouTube watching this from some other part of the world. But, but uh, if, you're, if you're here, I'll suggest several things that are beautiful around town. Where do I go if I want to have beauty? Um, a couple years ago, when my son was going to go to college, uh, he wanted to go to Washington, D.C., to George Washington University. And being a country bunkin, I, I went with him, of course. And I, but I asked, I asked the uh, interviewer, I said, where, where do you go to get quiet here in Washington, D.C., major metropolitan city, the capital of the world? Uh, we're the most powerful nation on earth. Uh, all the embassies are here. All the hubbubs here, all the politics. Where do you go to get quiet? And uh, the, the man doing the interview understood immediately what I was saying. He said, well, this is what I do. And he said, he said I go out um, in, uh, to a park that's isolated from the other parks, a little known, uh, but it, go, it juts out into the uh, Potomac River. And I go out to that very point on, uh, as far as I can get from the city, but right uh, walking out uh, to this, uh, to this uh, point on the Potomac River. And I sit down there, and I can, I can sit there, I can look out over the water, I can see the sunset um, on the Potomac River, and, and I can be quiet. And I thought about that. I said, well, Ronce, let's do that. Let's do that. And we, we found that as a place of quiet and solitude. There are other places, of course, obviously people can go to, uh, in Buchanan itself, I enjoyed the river walk. I think it's an inspired uh, genius of, of our town fathers who, who said, let's do a river walk. Uh, there's a, there's a, a posting there that says how much money they spent on it, and, and uh, someone else might say, well, you spent too much money on that. You could have done other things with the money, potholes or something else. But, but it's a thing of beauty. It's a, it's a wonderful walking trail about a mile and a quarter around, and, and I, I go a couple of loops when I go over and walk, and I have different routes I go, but I always look forward to the changes of the season in the river, the leaves, the flowers, um, the laughter of children uh, playing games, uh, a lot of college uh, sports activities all around that area, and, uh, and uh, it, it, it revives my soul, uh, a thing of beauty for God. I think, I think that's a place that all of us could find. I've been inspired also uh, to think back to what my father taught me. Um, and dad was, a, a, of course, inspiration for this show and was an early guest some 52 times telling his stories of his practice. And I actually wanted dad, uh, dad's memories to be recorded and they became part of a book, uh, Tender Loving Care, Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, which is still for sale uh, artistry on Maine and uh, the Historic Society and up at St. Joseph's Hospital in their, book sh in their auxiliary uh, gift shop and, and, and 50 other bookstores around town, around the state. So Dad's book and then a book I wrote about his stories and his appearances on this TV program. <clears throat> but Dad, Dad took me as a little boy to what he characterized as the seven natural wonders of Upshur County. And, and I have started visiting some of those places again. Uh, in my older age, and, I, and uh, this, this past weekend we went up to the Great Falls on the Buchanan River t at Ten Mile. And I took some pictures and I put them up on Facebook, and it's been uh, marvelous to uh, the response. People are saying, just beautiful, just magnificent. But our own Buchanan River, uh, I want to just close with this thought that that flows right through the middle of us as a county from top to bottom, and it's a beautiful river. Uh, the, the, the fact that the Great Falls is, is magnificent because rushing water and, and waterfalls is always beautiful. Uh, but, but you could pick a spot all along the river. You could walk from Buchanan to Ten Mile, would be 10 miles. That would be a pretty good walk. Uh, but there's, uh, there's things to see all along the way. Uh, while I was there, I, I went over to the uh, Ten Mile United Methodist Church. Uh, and the early... Um, Fathers of that town uh, were inspired to build that church right on what we call the Blue Hole. Uh, it's the deepest part of the river. Uh, some people, when I was growing up, the legend was that it was 
no one knew the bottom. I'm sure that there's a bottom and I'm sure that people can uh, go in and either dive down or, or, or measure it uh, through uh, ultrasound or some method. To, but it's a very, very deep pool of water uh, and they built this wonderful uh, church, country church, right on the shore of that. So it's a, it's a very pristine, it's a thing of beauty for God. And we can find that all around us. Well, I hope you've been inspired by what my sister Kay said, what I've tried to elaborate about this. And look for your own thing of beauty. This is part of your tender, loving care, part of your own soul group, and then, and, or soul growth. And, and until the next time then, thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Special thanks to Channel 3 for this opportunity to come your way each week. We'll see you next week. Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, written by Dr. Harold D. Allman. A collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small town doctor in central West Virginia. And Tender Loving Care. Stories from a West Virginia Doctor, Volume 2, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman. Using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small town doctor. They can be found for purchase at Amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buckhannon for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Almond, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.